we need to have the Ryan Day conversation. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. He is yeah. two and six against top five teams, not counting one of the Michigan losses. He's 0 and 3 against Michigan. He's 0 and 2 against Oregon. Your job is to win these games. Anybody can come to Ohio State and beat Wisconsin and Purdue and Michigan State and Iowa and stuff. Like the point is to beat these teams. He did beat Clemson one time in the playoff, and he did beat Notre Dame on the road last year. And if if Ohio State makes a field goal against Georgia in that semifinal a couple of years ago, they probably win the national championship. We're not having this conversation. But that is the margin of error you have when you're the Ohio State coach, and they are not getting it done in those five in those five games against Michigan and Oregon. The defensive line for Ohio State has one sack. This is a defensive line that's supposed to be full of NFL guys who turn down the NFL to come back. Zero mm-hmm. sacks two TFLs against Oregon. That's a problem. Like, like we haven't even gotten the Michigan game stuff this year, but like, how do you mm-hmm. feel about Ryan day? Well, I, I think for me, one, I I'm sad. He's not winning the big games because in my, in my perfect world, he would pick out a different elderly person to scream at in his post game interview for every big win. Like we saw against Notre Dame, but ultimately I, I'm with you on this. And I, I don't think necessarily that the program is getting worse under him obviously the roster is a big part there but in the nil era the value of a coach as a recruiter seems to be undercut a little bit because if you're well funded a lot of coaches can look like good recruiters i like the chip kelly hire but it's a problem at this point and you've got the good news for him is you've got another half of the season to prove that you don't have that problem but we have a pretty strong sense of evidence here uh, that you, when you have these big games, it's not even that you're you're losing them. The only game that that he lost in that bunch that was really kind of probably could have gone either way was the Georgia semifinal. You know, the Michigan losses. It's not just that they've been losing to Michigan; it's that they've been getting bullied by Michigan. Last year was kind of close, but the the, the two previous were, were really a problem for him. So, you know, Oregon, that's a tough loss. Uh, obviously, that's one that that could have gone either way, but. Like you said, Chris, when you are the Ohio State coach and your floor at this program is so high and there's so many coaches that have won, if you don't win these games, then you start looking around. And this is why I I think I get the people who say, well, you know, he's 50 and whatever, and you can't fire a coach that goes that 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 racks up a record like that. I I think in Ohio State, you can very seriously think about that. Especially being 0 3 against Michigan. Come on. Yeah. Who are you talking about? That's a problem. Like if they if they lose to Michigan this year, then blow the whole thing up. I like uh, yeah. I, I still think oh, yeah. I still think this is a really good team that can win the national championship. I agree. We have mm-hmm. our, we, we have our yeah. midseason picks coming up. I pick them to play in the national championship. They can still win the Big Ten this year too. And it, mm-hmm. it, like it's not like they're not at that level. They are at that level. They're just not winning the game. Here, here's that's my what you have to here, do. Here's my question with this: is yes, I think this is this is an Ohio State that can win the, the national title. But I don't think anybody's saying that this team will win the national title. And how many coaches in college football could you hand this roster and maybe even this schedule and you watch them coach and you say, this is a team that's going to win the national championship? I feel like there's a decent number. I don't know how many. Maybe it's five or six. But at this point, we know that Ryan Day is not one of them because I still think this is clearly the best roster in college football. You've taken one loss, not a bad loss, but still a loss in a game that you were favored to win. And we can touch on some of the time zone stuff if we want to. We, we crunch some numbers here. Uh, Producer Camp points out if you gave Jerry Kill this roster, he would, he would probably be able to win it all. Uh, that's probably about right. This man was competing for conference titles at New Mexico State, so I think that's probably about right. And now what they're doing at, uh, uh, at Vanderbilt is, is pretty impressive. But to, you, know, you look at, at what's left for this team, okay? They've got a bye. They've got Nebraska at Penn State. The Penn State game will decide a lot. Mm. How much credit do you get Look, for winning that game? We'll see. We'll the the see. narratives the narratives on the line yeah. for Penn State, uh, Ohio State in a couple of weeks if they're both still top five teams, which we presume yeah. it's going to be out of control. It's a shame so. that that college football no longer has ties in a game where Ryan Tate bases off with, with James Franklin. Damien, where do you go here if you're on this roster and you're playing for Ryan Day and you guys mm-hmm. are winning a bunch of games? 
but you have the issue. What is that like from from a locker room standpoint of, hey, we're just not getting the job done in the games that decide how our season is remembered? Yeah, I mean, I got to imagine that that's tough. I mean, just because like you're you're right there and for Ohio State right there is like national champions. It's not Mm -hmm. like, oh, you're right there to like figuring out, you know, your identity or you're right there figuring out who you want to be like. No, you're right at the doorstep of national champion, because if they win these big games like they're they obviously show that they are the team that we could pick and say, yes, this Ohio State team came with a national championship. So yeah. it's got to be frustrating. And, you know, I just hope that these guys aren't losing faith because when, when you got guys who lose their confidence in their coach, then you just have a mess of problems. And, you know, we're sitting here talking about Ryan Day being 0-3 against Michigan, losing all these big games. You know, they haven't won their national championship yet. So then if he loses control of the locker room and the confidence in the guys to get them there, because obviously these guys know that they're talented. They know that they have the best roster that money can buy. But, you know, if they feel like they've got a guy that can't develop their talent at a level that doesn't just, you know, make them NFL ready, but gets them the hardware that they desire in college, that's going to be a real tough situation. And that's when we're going to start looking at Ryan Day being on the hot seat. So I hope these guys are just stay bought in because, again, this is a one point loss to a good Oregon team. I think that Oregon, I have a completely different perspective of Oregon coming out of last night's game than I had going into the game. So it's not it's not a bad loss. You've got to buy. And like I said, you're still right there knocking on the door. So, you know, those guys just need to buy in. Obviously, Ryan Day, he needs to fix something, whether it's him, whether it's his staff, how they handle things. You know, I thought even the the clock management by Will Howard at the end of the game was horrendous. You know, and that's something that needs to be ironed out, cleaned out. So whatever he needs to do to help these guys, you know, be put these guys in the best position so they can start to win these big games and, you know, for in their sake, um, you know, become national champions. I hope that that combined with the guys being bought in can, can bring them some more success.